So this morning in my sermon, I shared that through the years, I've had a really growing relationship with Mother Mary, both in my life and in my prayer life. She has become more and more important to me as that holy mother energy. And um, for this season, it seems appropriate then from my perspective. And also, this is, in a lot of ways, Mary's season. It's the season of anticipation, the season of birth and her pregnancy, carrying the Christ child in her womb. I found a quotation that I really liked and wanted to share with you tonight. This is from St. Louis de Montfort. Um, he was a traveling preacher in the 1700s, and he said, Jesus Christ is not known as he ought to be because Mary has, up to this time, been unknown. So that's something to ponder, and it seems worth then to, for all of us to take some time to ponder a little bit more about Mary, the one who pondered so many things in her heart. From our reading tonight, we had the Magnificat. In place of the psalm, we have a canticle. And this canticle is actually what came in Luke's gospel right after the point where I stopped reading. It's sometimes called the Song of Mary. And the Magnificat comes from the beginning. The beginning phrase in our translation says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. And in some other translations, it says, my soul magnifies the Lord. And so that's where we get that Magnificat. And it's in an older meaning of magnifying. It's in that praising and offering glory to the Lord. And if we really read through this text, it's quite subversive. It says things that um, understandably would make those in authority nervous. Um, he has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. And it goes on and on. It kind of describes what we would think of as a world topsy-turvy or turned upside down. And yet some people would say Mary's describing a world turned right side up which is ultimately what Christ came to do. So as history unfolds, the story continues. From our holy women, holy men, I wanted to read a little excerpt there of what it says about Mary, and it mentions the Magnificat. That's why I wanted you to know what that was referencing. The honor paid to Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, goes back to the earliest days of the church. Two Gospels tell of the manner of Christ's birth and the familiar Christmas story. In Luke's Gospel, we catch a brief glimpse of Jesus' upbringing at Nazareth when the child was wholly in the care of his mother and his earthly father, Joseph. During Jesus' ministry in Galilee, we learn that Mary was often with the other women who followed Jesus and ministered to his needs. At Calvary, she was among the little band of disciples who kept watch at the cross. After the resurrection, she was to be found with the twelve in the upper room, watching and praying until the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost. Mary was the person closest to Jesus in his most impressionable years, and the words of the Magnificat, as well as her humble acceptance of the divine will, bear more than an accidental resemblance to the Lord's Prayer and the Beatitudes of the Sermon on the Mount. We can believe that one who stood in so intimate a relationship with the incarnate Son of God on earth must, of all the human race, have the place of highest honor in the eternal life of God. A paraphrase of an ancient Greek hymn expresses this belief in very familiar words. O oh, higher than the cherubim, more glorious than the seraphim, lead their praises, alleluia. Speaking of Mary. So we can think of tonight when we sing the Sanctus and we talk about the heavenly host and all the angels, think of Mary as the ultimate leader of that chorus. Now, a current living day um, nun in the Roman Catholic Church, Joan Chittister, she, she often gets herself into trouble, but she's still a nun in the Roman Catholic tradition, so at least somewhat in good standing with the Pope. But she says, a close reading of scripture reveals a woman immersed, and this is about Mary, 
Immersed in the same pressing issues that echo in our times, Mary was an unwed and pregnant, an advocate for the oppressed, we just heard that in the Magnificat, a political refugee, she had to flee into Egypt to get away from Herod. Remember that St. Joseph had the dreams and led her and the Christ child into Egypt as political refugees. She was a mother of a condemned prisoner, a third world woman, a liberator, and the first disciple. So, and if you think about being that first disciple, I can say as a mother, disciples learn, and we as mothers and all parents, I'm sure some of our greatest teachers are our children. So as she taught Christ in his upbringing, she too learned from him. And in a lot of the icons that you'll see of Mary with the Christ child, she will be pointing to Jesus. And so there too, as a disciple, she's always pointing to her son. And all that she wants to do for us in praying for us is to bring us closer to Christ. And so in this season where we are looking to the birth of Christ and to the light of the world, let us also get to know Mary better so that we can know him better. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty,